Hey everyone, uh, Harley here, and uh, I'm really, really excited about this next interview. We we're just really fortunate to have you here today, so thanks for joining us, Pharrell. Whoa, thank you. Thank you. Thanks for having me. I think that most people who own their own business, they don't always self-identify as an entrepreneur. Um, you know, talk to any, uh, my parents are immigrants and talk to them and ask my dad about entrepreneurship. I'll say, I'm not an entrepreneur. I just put food on the table. But for me, entrepreneurship is this incredible, um, it, it levels the playing field and it allows people to really, you know, find their, their life's work. And I'm curious about the first moment that you felt entrepreneurial. Well, um, I don't know that I've, I've always felt entrepreneurial. I think that word entrepreneur has always intimidated me. Me and Jay-Z made a song about it. Um, but that word's always intimidated me like it does most other people. Like you said, when you referenced your father, you know, he said he's not an entrepreneur. He said he just puts food on the table because there was something that he felt like he either A, could do or that he needed to do and that it was going to be a means uh, to an end for him. And I think I relate to that a lot in the sense that like, you know, there's, there's either something that I felt compelled to do or something that I felt like, you know, I would enjoy doing that would, you know, get me a result that I wanted. And especially if I felt like it didn't exist right. elsewhere, that's, that's when it really, you know, that's when it really put a battery in my back. You know, it's interesting because even, you know, when I, I, I obviously don't speak as uh, nearly as much as you do, but often when people ask me uh, my story and they want to hear about Shopify, they often never ask me, well, what happened before Shopify? And, you know, I had a t-shirt business. I, I used to DJ when I was in uh, high school because I wanted to be a DJ. No, nobody would hire me. So I started my own little DJ business, but no one really, they want to hear the highlight reel. No one really wants to talk about the failures. And at Shopify, we talk a lot about how mentally challenging it is to, to create something, to run something, no matter who you are. I'd love to hear from you, you know, if, if, you're, if you're willing to share this, a, a time or a failure that you had that sort of helped you define, um, define your, your growth and your professional career from there. Like, how do you handle those failures? How do you think about failure? So failure to me is less about that word and, and the awe, undeserved awe that we put on it. And I, I, I kind of repurpose it to, as a lesson, right? The issue is, it's like you fail a bunch of times and you're just like a failure, right? But if you don't learn the lesson a bunch of times, then you're just like someone who enjoys losing, right? Um, and I think one of my greatest issues in the past was vetting. You got to vet people. The other thing is find people who are so much better than at their job than you are at your job. Yeah. Amen. You know what I mean? Especially yeah. if it's your company, like yeah. everyone in there should be better than you, you know, meaning they've gone through crisis before they can deal with crisis management. You know what I mean? Like, you know, uh, force majeure, like anything happens right now, they got it. They've been through it before. Um, because like, you know, it's like, I never ran track, but I've always heard that like, if you ever want to be faster, you got to run with a bunch of people who are way faster than you. And there's something that happens with us as humans. When you are surrounded by those who are like superior in, 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 in their performance than you are, you're bound to be lifted up. If you're as ambitious, if not, yeah. you're wasting everyone's time, yeah. you know? And so for me, vetting and, and doing the work, you know, finding people who are monsters at their job. That's what costed me in a couple of, it's like, a, you know, those were the bumps in my roads. You know, it was like not choosing right. And then, by the way, not realizing how blessed I was at the time, you know. Um, so, and that was only short lived because once I got it, I got it. I vetted for the right people. I cherished the relationships when I, when I got them and I've done everything in my power to continue to let these people know how important and how integral they are to, you know, my journey. It's funny because I think so many, you're talking about, you know, the human condition is that, um, we, we tend to want to be comfortable, but actually the magic happens where, when we get really comfortable with being uncomfortable. And oh, I yeah. think you see a lot of artists and a lot of entrepreneurs, they tend to surround themselves with people just like them. 
And, oh, yeah. and that may work out, but often it, it doesn't. And actually, when you start surrounding yourself with people that are way better than you, it's something you don't even understand. That's kind of where the magic starts to happen. 100%. And by the way, um, you know, on the other side of your discomfort is where your real true journey begins. You know, when you're walking around, you know, you've decided, you've looked, whether you want to admit it or not, you've decided that you have, and I'm talking about the listeners out there right now, but, you know, you've decided, oh, this is my walk. Mm-hmm. You know, this is the way I stand. Oh, when I stop, this is how I stop. And this is what I do. And this is what I do with my hand. And when I take my first step, this is what I do, right? That's not really who you are. That's choreographed. And that is practice. And that is what you've decided is the coolest way from your point of view. But the minute that you trip and fall, when you hit that ground, that's who you are. And if you really want to know who you are, it's how you get back up. When you get back up, because you have no cool on you then, right? You're getting yeah. up in, sh- in, in shame or you're getting up in pride. Whatever it is, that's who you really are. And I love that. To me, that's what this is all about, right? It's, it's that discomfort. You know, when you ordered too short for the month or, you know, or for the quarter or you've overordered or, you know, all these things. It's like the way that you react to that is sort of who you are. That's where you're, that's where we can really see a true illustration of your DNA. Yeah. Not, not when the spotlight's on you. In fact, just to bring it back to something that I think you and I both are into, which is skateboarding. Oh, Remember when man. I was a kid and I wanted, to, I wanted to learn how to skateboard and I asked someone, I said, so do I ride normal or goofy? And they're like, you, we'll, 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 we'll let you know. And at some point in the next five minutes, they just pushed me and whichever foot came forward, they thought that should be the foot. I wasn't right. prepared for it. I wasn't trying to impress them that they were riding goofy. So I was going to ride goofy also. But in that moment, I was so authentically me. And now I know that I, I actually ride goofy. And sort of, yep. it's a great metaphor for, for life. I think. That's exactly right. Skateboarding, yeah. by the way, has always been the lens that I look at everything, good, bad, or indifferent. That's what shaped my complete landscape of like perception. You decided, you and your team decided um, with human race uh, skincare to explore uh, sort of this direct to to consumer, this DTC um, business model versus Mm -hmm. doing what I think most people do, which is a collaboration or a partnership with an existing brand or putting it, you know, on the shelves of a third party retailer. What was it around about the sort of selling direct to the end consumer that that you thought was was the right way to, to, to launch this? We just always want a direct connection. You know, it says, um, you know, it's direct to consumer, but really it's, you know, that really just means like a personal connection. Yeah. It's like from me to you, you know, right. and by the way, we did this in the middle of a pandemic and all the analysts <laughs> were like, what are you doing? How could you do this? Well, I'm like, what are you guys talking about? Like there are recession proof businesses, you know, um, the, the usual ones, you know, of, but I, we think that like skin health is, is, um, it's one of those things that should be considered um, important, you know, um, just in general. And like having a connection with people who feel the same way and want that same kind of advice, like we want to be there for them because it's not just our products, right? It's a, it's products, it's people, and it's also experiences. Like when you go on the website, you're not just, it's not just able to buy, you know, the 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 skincare. Like there's other things there for you as well. Like there's video, not- there's content, there's explanation, there's yes. like you, you go deep on the ingredients. I mean, and, yes. and I think that's, you know, that's the beauty of direct to consumer is that I, as a consumer of, of, of this particular, you know, moisturizer, for example, I'm not just buying moisturizer, I'm buying the entire story and all the different inputs that led to that. And in many ways that makes me feel closer to the creator, which in this case is you. This is exactly what we want. We yeah. want you to feel that connection and we want that connection with you. A lot of people that are watching this are going to be um, in the early stages of creator, uh, artist, uh, entrepreneur. And, you know, many of your brands, I think, would set you apart even across, you know, um, the other very well-known, very successful artists is that your brands in particular seem to have stood the test of time in a very unique way. And and where, where different generations of consumers have an association to you, Pharrell, have an association to what you've built. And I, I'd love for you to sort of maybe talk a little bit about how, how like any advice you have for someone who's just getting started um, 
in entrepreneurship or in creating music or creating clothing or, or, you know, skincare or skin health, um, about building a brand or building a company that is, that has longevity to it, that has a longer term impact. So one, find something that you love to do something that you would do for free just because you were happy to be there. Like you'd be happy to be an intern, right? Yeah. One. Number two, try to find like a vocation connected to it. Do whatever it takes. Find a vocation that is connected to something that you love so much that you would show up for free. Right? So those are two things. Number three, if you can find a way to service humanity as well with that job, well, now you have a dream job that you wake up every day and feel like you get paid for free. And you are also contributing to karma, good karma or goodwill. Like that's the reason why you start a business. If you're going to start one. Pharrell, thank you so, so much for this. Um, I can speak for everyone watching and myself included. Uh, I, I, we are, we are inspired by you. Um, we are inspired by what you've done. And honestly, it's not just the success that you've had. It's the way that you've carried yourself with, with class and character and authenticity. And, um, I just want to say thank you. No, thank you. And thank you. Thank you for having us up on Shopify. Like this has been a great experience. I don't know if some of the people are already, you know, the people who are on, you already know how great the experience is with Shopify. Um, but if you're thinking about it, let me just tell you, if you're able to come up here and be a part of this platform, you're in great, great, great company. And as I said to you before, you know, surround yourself with people who are better than you. Like this is a university. Shopify. Right. So thank you for having us yeah, here. Thank you for having me so much to me. Thank you. My brother.